Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to be working on render layers. We're going to use these to create and manage global and custom AOVs. We'll also be setting up the final solution to render an AOV layer as a single multi-channel EXR file and that's in preparation for compositing. Okay, so I'm just going to jump out of the render cam and into perspective view just so we can take a look at this scene and we can review what we're, what we're going to be working in. Okay, so we can see that we've got this car uh, that uh, this car model with a, uh, a an image plane behind it, which represents, uh, which is basically a screen capture from the from the scene, which is what we're going to be putting behind the car in the final composite. So this in the scene is basically just for reference at, at this stage. If we go back to the uh, render cam view, I used it for aligning up the uh, the floor plane to the uh, to, to the to the edges of the pavement, etc. Um, and I'm just using it for general reference uh, so that I can work a few things out with regard to things like the um, the HDRI map. Anyway, just moving on. So we've got our car, we've got our we've got our floor object, which is uh, which is there only to receive the shadows from the from the lights as they interact with the car. Uh, we have this sky dome element here. Uh, which has got an HDRI image which was captured at the same place as the uh, as the background um, and there's a few things I've done and I've just clicked it so that I can get at the attributes I've upped the resolution to 3000 and up the samples uh, to a, a commensurate amount to the to the resolution um, and I've done that because to get the most out of the HDRI okay I've also enabled AOV indirect, and I've done that because we're going to be outputting AV, AOV passes later on. Uh, I've also set the visibility, to, the camera visibility, and the Arnold shader for the uh, for the Sky Dome to zero, so that basically the Sky Dome itself doesn't render out only the effects that it has on the rest of the scene. Okay. In addition to this, I've got this spotlight element, which isn't mathematically correct in terms of uh, in terms of how it's how it's adding additional light to this scene I've done it deliberately just to put some additional light onto the car which is going to give us some extra flexibility in the composite okay if we take a look at the at the uh, at the settings of this you can see that I've adjusted the cone angle the penumbra and the uh, and the drop off to uh, to try and sort of uh, just soften the, the the light sources there um, I've set the decay rate to quadratic and when you do use quadratic decay you, you have to really up the light intensity so I've increased the light intensity by quite a quite a, a big amount there on the uh, on the on the spotlight um, if we come down to the Arnold subset I've also increased the exposure so really between the exposure and between and the intensity is how we control that particular light once quadratic decay rate is enabled. And as I said, we've got a floor object which serves no purpose other than to receive the shadows from from the car. Okay, so let's just switch back to our render cam view and we'll just do a quick test render. Okay, so you can see that I've got my samples down here these are the default samples and I'm, I'm also I've also set my uh, where are we my test resolution to 50% uh, which is why this even though this is set to 1280 by 720 it's rendering at half that resolution and that's just to speed up the resolution so this is completed now you can see it's quite noisy and that's because the samples are down but it gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be working on and what this scene will look like at the end okay so I'll just knock that off and we'll go forward Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by activating the global AOV passes. Okay, so before we do that, I'm just going to quickly open the render layers and I'm going to be explaining these a little bit more as we go along. But suffice to say that in the render layers, there is a master scene layer. Um, and for most people that use Maya, they, uh, they won't even know about this render panel and they certainly won't go beyond the master scene layer. So the master scene layer contains all the render settings that are set up in the render settings which you're going to come into in a second, any AOVs that we assign and any lights that are in the scene. So that's what the master scene gives us. Okay, and that's currently enabled. So anything that we do in the render settings is affecting this master layer. Okay, so into the render settings. <coughs> 
we start in the common tab I'm certainly not going to go through all this because I think you'll know all this already but suffice to say my project is set up so this is going into the images folder any renders that I do going into the images folder of my project you can see the image size set to 128720 uh, I haven't set any file name prefix I'll come back to this later on I've set my image format to EXR um, and I'm just outputting a single frame I'm rendering to the render cam uh, just purely and simply because I, that's the that's the camera I've set up so I don't want to inadvertently be rendering the perspective just because I happen to be in that view okay there's my settings at the bottom which determine the, the resolution and the aspect ratio etc okay as I mentioned I've left the samples as default. I'll be coming back to these at the end just to increase them. And that's pretty much it. So we're now ready to sort of go into the AOVs and set these up. So remember, anything that I set up here is, is applying itself to the scene layer, the master scene layer that we looked at in the scene panel. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, this is the list of available AOVs with the shaders and the lights that I've got uh, in my scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way through this now and I'm going to assign some shape, some AOVs and make them active. So I'm just going to work my way down this and I'm going to add all the all the AOVs that are required in order to reconstruct a beauty pass under all conditions. So I'm going to want the background, the coat, uh, I'm going to want the diffuse direct and the diffuse indirect. I'm just holding down the control key as I work my way down this to make the selections. I'm going to want the emission. Whoops. Start again. I hit the wrong key by mistake with my clumsy hands. So I want the background, the coat, diffuse direct, diffuse indirect, emission. I want the specular direct and the specular indirect. I want subsurface direct and indirect. I want transmission direct and indirect. Um, I want the volume. And I think that'll do. Okay, so I'm going to pass all that over. So there we go. I've got about a dozen passes in there. Now, something about these passes. Is that uh, is that I'll f I'll find that when I've actually rendered these out, I will probably find that um, that a lot of them don't contain any data, and that's okay. Um, it really does depend on the as I've mentioned before. It really does depend on the shaders and the materials that have been applied within your scene. It applies to the lights and the specific setup of the lights and the configuration of the scene generally. So, but if you've got all these passes enabled, then uh, then under any conditions. Um, then you will be able to reconstruct the AOV, the beauty from these AOVs. One thing I should say is the volume there, which is a perfect example of what I mean, that will only apply as a pass if I'm using volumetrics or some kind of fluid systems in here which uh, require voxels or use of voxels, then otherwise that won't give me anything. But I'm going to leave it in because that is the list of AOVs required to construct the beauty pass as stated by, uh, by, the, uh, by the good people that make Arnold. And as you can see, once these are selected, these are listed down here as the AOVs that are in in, in play. We can see that we've got um, we've got options to change the um, to change the data setup for these. Uh, we've got options to change to different file formats. Uh, we can change the filters, and we can load drivers and filters globally at this stage. Okay, and I will definitely be coming back to this at the end when we're about to render out. Okay, so that is my render settings so I'll close that down now and return to my layer so all of those settings are in there yeah these are default settings so these have been applied to the to the master layer now we're going to be populating some custom layers down here now the thing about the master layer is that anything that we apply in the master layer will propagate down all of the layers in our sets so all the render settings will apply to all of our layers all the AOVs will apply within the within the layers that we assign etc Okay, so that's enough on render settings. We should be ready to start now by creating our first um, our, our first custom layer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button here, which is what I use to add a layer, and I'm just going to call this AOV layer, and this is what I'm going to use as my catcher to 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 catch all my AOVs from that uh, 
from from those render settings. Okay, notice the underscore. Maya likes Maya likes names that don't have gaps, so uh, so I've just put that in automatically. Okay, so layers are basically containers, and they're containers for collections. So I'm going to add a collection here, and I'm going to turn this layer on. You notice that the master the master scene layer now is is turned off, so that's not going to render. It's this one that's going to render and preview. Okay, so. With this um, with this collection set, I'm just going to call this a OV passes. Okay, now this is a collection. All right. So what we want to do in here is we want to basically include every bit of scene geometry, lights, etc. that we want to be included in this. So because we are basically capturing all the AOVs, we need the car, we need the floor, we need both of our lights. Okay, so I'll select those in the outliner and then add those in, and they get added into the include, which means that all that ele all those elements are included in this particular collection. Now, what you should take from that is we don't have to include everything. We can include specific subsets of specific things into a collection and perform a very specific operation within this. Okay, so that's going to sit there and that's going to capture all of our AOVs. While we're here, I should mention this clapperboard icon, which all the layers will have, including our master layer. I'm not going to have it on on my master layer because I don't want to necessarily include that in the renders. Um, what this basically does is that when these are turned on, you can see I turn it on or off. What I do when I turn these on is I basically mean allow those to be included in the render. So if I only want to render specific uh, specific layers, then I can turn every layer off apart from the ones that I want to render and then pull a render and obviously that saves a lot of time and computer resource. Okay, so let's do another render just to test this out. Okay, and this shouldn't take too long. I'll play this by ear. If it uh, if it does take long, what I'll start to do is I'll start to pause the screen capture uh, during the uh, during the the previewing phase. Okay, so that's rendered out there. Took 18 seconds. Now the difference now is that in our preview now we have all of our layers listed so we can start to work out now which layers are going to give us any data so for example the background layer we can see there if we go through the red the green the blue the alpha channel then that's giving us no data so that's not serving any purpose the coat again if we go through we can see that that's not either so as i said quite a few of these won't give us any information there's the diffuse direct we can see that that is giving us specific information and the diffuse indirect. The specular direct, see just the hot spots there, and the specular indirect, which is the majority of the of the specular light. Subsurface may or may not. Uh, it really does depend on how you've set up your scene. Same goes for transmission. Volume we already know won't give us anything. Okay, so that's the difference. This uh, this is basically giving us this is uh, this is giving us all the passes separate now. Okay, so I'm just going to collapse that and we'll create ourselves a new layer called a shadow pass. So I'm going to add a new layer here and I'll just call it shadow layer. And again, I want to add a collection to this, which I'll call shadow pass and then turn this layer on. Okay. So with our collection, we want to include everything from our scene that is involved in the creation of the shadow. Well, obviously the car is what's going to cast the shadow, the floor is what's going to receive the shadow, and our two lights are going to be the source, the light source that creates the shadow. So we want everything in there. So I've added everything in. So whatever applies now, that I, whatever I do now on this layer will affect those four objects. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an override. And in this particular case, if I click, we can see that we've got a whole bunch of overrides. These are really useful. So we can create global overrides, which in this case we're going to do using a material. So this is going to be my, my shadow 
override. Good practice to name these. Not not essential, but once you get into the render passes, then these are important. This is important information that tells us what each of the layers includes. Okay, so I'm going to override all the materials that are involved on the floor and on the various elements of the car with a shadow. So I'm going to come into here and I'm going to start to type AI shadow and we can see it appear straight away. So this is a standard uh, material that's provided to us by uh, Arnold and once we click that then that gets ass assigned as a shader group and now that sits over this layer. So what that means then is if we render this out now I don't know why I hit the, the hyper shader there. If we render this out now, don't forget that I, I told it to render the uh, the shadow layer. We won't see this in the RGBA, we'll only see this in the, the alpha channel. We can see how noisy it is, that's because our samples are low. But what we're seeing now are we're seeing the effects of the uh, we're seeing the effects of the shadow. So this is what our shadow pass will look like. And this gives us a lot of scope for being able to control the way our environment looks. Okay, so I'll just knock that back off and stop that render. Okay, I'll collapse that and we'll create another custom layer. In this case we'll create one for ambient occlusion. So I'll just call this the AO layer. And within this I'll create myself a collection. And I'll just call this AO Pass. And again, what I want to do is I want to include the scene elements that need to be part of this pass. Well, in this case, ambient occlusion doesn't need lights. It's a self-shadowing shader. So all I need is my floor, my geometry, basically. So my floor and my car group. So I'll add that in. And then again, I want to apply an override. In this case, it's a shader. So a shader override. And I'm going to call this AO override. And then come and get an ambient occlusion shader. So there it is again, it's one of the standard default shaders. That's applied into the scene as an override, which means that if I render my scene again now, then here's my first deliberate mistake. I didn't enable this layer, so I'll just enable that layer and then render again. And we can see the effect of the ambient occlusion. You can also see with the ambient occlusion shader selected there, you can also see that I've got a few uh, attributes to deal with here. So for example, I can raise up the samples, uh, which will uh, which will take out a lot of the grain in this, uh, in this particular pass. Um, I can do a, a few other things like change the spread and the fall off, but they're usually left, best left at the default. Um, but you can obviously change them to see how the uh, how that how the ambient occlusion distributes across the across the geometry. But I'm going to leave those as is, and I'll just render that again. It should take a little bit longer this time, but it but it should have eliminated a whole bunch of the um, of the noise that's within the layer. Okay, didn't take much longer, and a much smoother render. Okay, so let's create another one. In this particular case, I'm going to create a wireframe pass. So I'll create myself a wireframe layer. Turn it on. And again, I want to create a collection. And in, included in this, I'm going to choose just my car and my floor and add it in. Okay, so the wireframe pass is clearly not going to be part of our composite. Um, the the reason why a wireframe would be useful is if we were um, if we were building a, a breakdown rig, for example, where we wanted to show our topology, then uh, having this as part as, as part of our render would be really good from that point of view because obviously what we're what we're able to do is incorporate that into the distribution of the um, of the way that the scene was built up and communicate that to to our uh, to our potential clients or uh, or employers okay so again what we need to do in here is we need to apply a material override and I'm just going to call this wireframe override 
and then I'm going to get a wireframe material and again Arnold serves as well with this standard uh, with this standard material um, I'll just check to see that I'd enabled the wireframe layer yes I have so let's do another test render and see what this looks like okay so we can see that looks a little bit odd um, but there's a few things that we can do in the attributes to improve that. So the first thing we can see is rendering triangles, which we wouldn't want. We certainly wouldn't want our client to think that we'd uh, we've been rendering in triangles. So we can switch that over to polys. Because the Arnold render view is interactive, then it's automatically uh, swapping out the attributes. So that's okay. Some of the colors that we see in here are basically because there's some some bits of the geometry are are um, are subgroups and they're not being they've not been converted to polys some of them nerves and things like that so but I'm not going to worry about those for the sake of the tutorial what I am going to do is change some of the properties maybe I just want it to look a little bit more interesting so let's 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 go down the Tron route so I'll, I'll make my background black and I'll make my lines orange just for argument's sake I can also bring down the thickness of my lines just to make them a little bit finer which may show a little the topology a little bit more clearly at the moment this is obviously rendering at only half the resolution so it's quite uh, it's quite poor when I when I actually zoom in but uh, but obviously if I up the resolution then that will look okay all right then so I'll knock this off and I'm going to create myself a pass just for the car Okay, quite often we want to have just an alpha channel, for example, that just includes the car. Uh, that allows us more control over the background in, but and separate to the shadows and things like that. So I'm going to come into here now and I'm going to create myself a new layer and I'm just going to call this car alpha layer. I'm going to create myself a collection for that. for pass and I only want to add in the car for that okay and then I'm going to do a material override on this so car car alpha override and then I'm just going to use one of Maya's standard surface shaders perfect for alphas Okay, so if I just enable that layer now, and we just again just do a quick test render, we won't see anything in the alpha channel, although strangely enough we are seeing the wheels, but that's what we're interested in. We're interested in that alpha channel, which basically takes the car and allows us to basically perform any operations that where we don't want any aspect of the car to be involved. So, I think we're about halfway through this process so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the tutorial here and we'll come back to it in as a second tutorial as part of a set.